everybody. Glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to seven plants I regret buying. I'm sat in a different area. I know it's a little bit weird, but I've just finished recording a video that should be, fingers crossed, up on my second channel now about basically what's going on with the lower portion of my face. If you don't know what I'm talking about, cool. If you want to know, then head over to that. I'll link it below just for anyone interested because I know I mentioned it last week. Uh, no one really guessed. I think like one person kind of guessed. So that was kind of cool. I kind of feel good about that. Right, into the video. So half of the plants on this list are plants that I have bought in for the shop and I regret. Just to get that, just to make that totally clear. Oh my God, it's raining. I hope you can't hear that. Why does this always happen to me when I film? Every single time it happens. So f half of them are from buying them into the shop and half of them are personal purchases. I haven't done that deliberately. That's just kind of how it's worked out. If you don't know, if you're, this is your first time watching my channel, I own a rare plant shop. So that is why I'm saying that. Some of them are for the shop, some of them are for me. Without further ado, I'm going to get straight into it. Let's not waste any time at all. The first plant I regret... Wow. Do you mind, really? The first plant that I really regret buying in for this shop is the Philodendron 69686. Now, why you ask? Honestly, why you ask? It's a great plant. People that have bought them from me might be able to tell you why, quite honest. I've sold them on and off and they've never really shipped well, but my launch that I did late last year, you know, the big launch for this place uh, opening, I think I may have refunded pretty much every single plant that shipped out. Every single philodendron 69686 that shipped out, I had to refund. Now that could be that they just don't like how I ship them. I'm not saying definitively that they're bad shippers, but I believe they are. Because that, uh, the same thing in moss, to be honest, they don't seem to take very well. Beautiful plant. As a plant, they're gorgeous. If you like plants like the Philodendron UPI, because that's a super rare one, everyone's really becoming more of a fan of it. I've mentioned this before as a kind of dupe for it in previous plant hauls. Really, really nice plant. But honestly, I regret buying it in. Because as we speak, somewhere down there in a tray, a tray by that I mean about 36 plants, something like that in a big tray. I have a full tray full. And honestly, I've pulled them from sale in the shop because I, I, it was just, it was losing me money to send them out. It was causing customers just general distress getting plants that just literally, these things would come in and I'd get like the same email from like five different customers basically saying, look, this plant's come in, it's dropped the leaf, which I thought was okay, but then it's dropped another and another and another. The roots seem fine, but it's just dropping all of its leaves and now I'm left with a stump. That happened, I th I'm pretty sure it happened with everybody. I think previously when I've sold this as well, earlier on in the year in March, it happened to a couple of people as well. So that leads me to believe that it's just terrible at shipping. And as a result, I'm now left with a tray of them. I don't know a good way of getting rid of them. Maybe I could do a giveaway. I think the only proviso on a giveaway is I can't replace it if it dies. So it's your risk, but it's not your risk if that makes sense. So I could, I guess I could do a giveaway, um, periodically, you know, send them out. And if they die, I'm really sorry. Um, I'm just not prepared to have someone really purchase them and ship them, I don't think. If you know what I should do with those plants, let me know. If you've got a really good idea, I just, I don't feel cool selling them in the shop because they don't ship, at least for me and our shipping methods here at the Red Plant Shop, they don't do well enough. They are not good enough. I'm not going through it again. I'm not putting my customers through that again. So for that reason, I regret buying them because I got quite a few in for launch and uh, not all of them were ready anyway. I got them some point midsummer, I think. So not all of them are ready, but the ones that were ready and they went out, they, they sucked, honestly. And you'll know what I mean if you ordered one of them from my shop and we had to refund it. So for that reason, the P69686, I kind of regret. Beautiful plant, but for me and the business, no good at all. The next plant on my list is the Variegated Dragon Scale. Now, this was a mixture of business and pleasure, this one. I bought the Variegated Dragon Scale. It, I mean, it was beautiful, wasn't it? Wasn't it? I bought that for my personal collection, but obviously, if the plant produced pups or anything like that, they would have gone into the shop. So it was kind of a bit of both when I bought it. So it was a really gorgeous purchase. And I don't think I'd really purchased many Variegated Alocasia prior to that point. So it was kind of one of the first, I think, that I got. And something I've learned about Variegated Alocasia they revert like a new tomorrow, literally. In nearly every case, when I bought a variegated alocasia, it has reverted on me, as in totally, just can't get it back. There are tricks to get it back, by the way. Let me know if you want me to do a video on that. There are tricks to maybe get it back. 
It's not surefire, but it, it's possible. There are tricks. You'd have to really go back to basics with the plan, but there are some tricks there. But long story short, it reverted on me. And I wanted so badly for this thing to grow because honestly, I'm sure I've got images of it. I used one for the shop. It's a stunning plan. It's absolutely stunning, beautiful plant. Alocasia dragon scale by default is a gorgeous plant, but this one was just stunning. It was so good. I may have paid, I could be wrong here. I think I might have paid around about 450 for that, possibly. Um, I knew it was a, a semi risk. I just didn't know the risk was that high on it. <laughs> so I paid for that and obviously it didn't pan out. So really I should be putting not just that plant on my list, but I should be putting many variegated allocations on this list because I bought, what have I bought? Variegated fry deck that um, I got midsummer. Not fry deck, sorry. Um, Amazonica. Although I do have variegated fry deck and they're a struggle as well. I've got a few in the shop and they struggle. So nearly every variegated allocation I've bought, I've struggled with. But I'm going to use the Dragon Scale as a flagship model because everyone knows it, if you've seen it anyway. And it was very beautiful and it was a big shame. So for that reason, I regret buying it. I mean, technically, I've got good photographs of it. So that's cool, I guess. There's like a £450 photograph. But I kind of regret that a little bit. It was a bit crap, really. Okay, the next plant on my list is weird and you're not going to understand, so I'm going to have to explain it. But the next plant on my list that I regret buying is the Monstera Thai Constellation. Now, just wait a minute, okay? Anyone that knows me knows that I really, really, really rave about these plants. I think the Monstera Thai Constellation is fantastic. The variegation is stable. It looks gorgeous. It grows big. They're reasonably easy. Great. Honestly, awesome. Not only that, but they're produced as a product of tissue culture, so you can get them in batches. You can't get them very often, but when you can get them, there should be enough for a period of time. Anyway, so they're really, really good for that. I love them, but not even last year, the year before last year, not long after I quit my job in like November, I bought round about 100 Thai. You know what? It might have even been 200 Thai. I think it was. 200 Thai constellation. I thought, right, let's just go for it. Let's get them in and let's rehab them for spring. I got them in and I noticed that, story time, my, um, my supplier or the packer had cut the roots of these ties. They were big ties and we're talking about this, this tall, so the leaves were like this, the big as my head quite easily. Not everyone, but most of them. I think to get the weight down, the person packaging the plants cut the roots. I didn't okay that. I was infuriated by that actually, but now they've been cut and that's it. Um, and the way our game works, if you get stuff from suppliers, you don't necessarily get stuff replaced if something goes wrong. It's one of these things, and I'd love to do a video on this, but it's like an advantage. It's, sorry, it's, it's a con of going direct to EG, Thailand, Ecuador, wherever. A lot, a lot of the time, you can't get stuff replaced. So that kind of sucks. Um, so these weren't getting replaced, long story short. The roots have been cut. I now had huge big plants with no root, so I knew they were going to just go and just go. And it took so long for them to grow root. I can't even tell you. I tried them in soil for a while. Um, and recently I've switched half of them to Lekka and they've all died switching them to Lekka. And that's after having them for about a year. You will have probably seen these tie on a video of my, I think the Red Plant Shop tour, actually the first one I did. You will see them. There's a lot. That wasn't even all of them. Half of them died because they, they rotted. I think the, the roots were cut. Then they, half of them dried out in transit. And if roots totally dry out and then you wet them again, it's rot, essentially. So half of them rotted. That just sucked. So for the longest time, I ended up with these really battered tie that I couldn't sell and they took up a lot of space. So I regret that tenfold. I wouldn't necessarily say that I regret buying Thai Constellation themselves. I regret buying from this place. And I regret buying so many from this place. I would buy that amount of Thai again, but yeah. So I still have tons of Thai in the shop, still. I think I'm down to one box because all the propagations failed. Don't know why, they just did. So I'm down to a whole box of Thai now, which sounds great, except I just, I'm so sick of the sight of them. I, I look at them and all I see is the pain and suffering I had to go through for months, for months to get these things to look anywhere near good. And it was just, it was just a pain. It was just a pain in the ass. So for that reason, I really, really regret them. Again, I don't, I totally endorse Monstera Thai Constellation. Um, endorse isn't the right word. I, I love them. I don't think you can endorse anything like that. That's the wrong word to use. I'm going to retract that straight away. I totally love them and I recommend them if you, if you want that kind of thing. But I regret buying that many. I regret buying them from that place. It wasn't good. I cannot believe someone would just cut the root to save on the weight of the box. FYI, I always say to every single supplier I have, look, tell us what the shipping is. 
If you can get it into two boxes rather than one, do it. I don't want them all squished and nasty. I will pay the extra shipping. Stick it in a second box because I tend to order huge volumes of plants when I do, I go hard. So if a supplier tries to stick them all in one box, they will get very squished and your plants are just... I mean, they've got to acclimate anyway, but I mean, they're done. But why someone would do that to save on the weight without even asking me to just pay the extra really really grinds my gears because it's given me a lot of space issues because these things take up a lot of space, they're ties. And I've had them for like two years and I still don't feel like a lot of them are ready. Some of them are now. I sold one the other day, the beautiful one, that one. But generally speaking, a lot of them, they just don't look their best and that pisses me off because I've had them two bloody years, do you know what I mean? So anyway, I could run on about those ties forever, so I'm going to just go to the next plant before I get really annoyed. Ah, the next plan. I'm really going to have to dig this uh, this footage out of me hauling this because I don't know where it is. But the next plan I have on my list that I regret buying a lot is the variegated philodendron varicosum. Spoiler alert. It wasn't variegated. It wasn't variegated at all. It was viral. Um, and I... I would just basically, long story short, there's no real explanation. I just didn't know. I hadn't seen this kind of variegation before. Um, on any fillow at the time, actually. I don't think many people had either because no one really said anything in the comments, I don't think. But I thought it was variegation. I thought it was unusual. And sometimes in the game that I'm in, in the rare plant game, you kind of just have to sometimes just take your shot. Do you know what I mean? You have to take a risk and it'll either pay off or it won't. That's very much the climate we're in. And anybody else that has the same kind of shop as me would probably agree. To a certain extent, you've got to take some risks. And this was just a calculated risk. It was a 600 pound risk by the way. Um, I don't like to mention prices on my channel because they're so subjective. They change. They, they change no matter where you are. I've said this a thousand times, but <laughs> I paid £600 and it was not worth that at all. It was probably worth, what, £90, £100, something like that. Um, it's gone, obviously, disposed of it. And that's that. There's not much to say other than I was... I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't think the person that sold me the plant knew it either. I don't know. We'll never know. I'm not about to point fingers. I thought it was pretty new appearance-wise at the time, so I'm not going to assume they knew. But I was sold a really viral plant, so that sucked. Luckily, I kept it away from everything else anyway, just because I was babying it so much. So nothing bad happened from that. But there's a little lesson. If you see a plant that looks like this one, get it checked, because uh, I think it's a virus. It's not variegation. And I have seen a couple on Facebook, and I think someone tagged me in something. I can't remember how long ago it was, sorry. Um, and we had a brief conversation. I was like, yeah, that happened to me. It was a virus. I, I, you know, I lost out there. So it can happen to you. Don't assume it's a seller's fault. Unless they're cutting off roots on their ties. That's their fault. But don't assume they know. They might not know. Um, just be very careful about stuff like that. Get a check. Get a second opinion. Slap it up on Facebook. Get people to comment on it. Whatever. But that is the time I paid £600 for a virus. Be very careful buying viral plants or potentially viral plants. It can be real messy. I speak from experience. I have lost from doing that. So moving on to the next plant on my list. Um, <laughs> this is kind of funny, actually. I'm sure I've got footage from this. Last year, when I got my really large Monstera that is on my living wall, you, you know the one. You know the one. I actually got a couple more. I think in total, I must have bought three extra Monstera to go with it. I, I went a little bit nuts, you could say. Long story short, large form Monstera is on this list because I bought too many. One I've had to cut down because we, I think myself and Ben picked it up. We bought it from eBay, but what the person didn't tell us was they'd just done top cutting and lobbed it in soil. So it didn't die, but it really deteriorated. So I actually cut all the foliage off it. It's in the corner. It's like a big long stick with nodes on it. I'm going to do some experiments on that. It's the one that just looked a bit gangly in the documentary. It just didn't look very good. The sexy one is downstairs on the like the corner part of the unit, if you know what I mean. It's down there. It's looking great, but it's taken up some room because it's huge, right? I wanted it in here, but honestly, I, I don't really think I've got room, to be honest. It's kind of full in here and I need the space to film in, but I do regret getting that many. I think if I just got that one and the big one, cool. I wouldn't have as many issues. Another thing, I thought about putting that on the wall as well and melding it in with the big one. I haven't yet. I've left it separate because I'm worried about basically the roots just taking over. But that's an option. But generally speaking, I regret buying that many. Although they are awesome, do not get me wrong. It's an absolute classic. And if you're into Monstera, get a large form. Um, but I do regret getting so many because I think I went a bit overboard. Like I'm pretty extra as a person anyway, but this was... This is too much. I'm going to come out and say it. it's too much. Yeah. Second to last plant on my list is honestly more of the same thing. So if you watched my documentary, cool. 
awesome. Uh, you'll remember it. If you didn't, I bought a really large, a really gigantium uh, philodendron gigantium variegata. It, it's gorgeous. It's now next to the living wall in a big pot. And I don't know what to do with it. I really don't know what to do with it. It's huge. It, it, it was going to go on the wall, but it didn't look right at all. I was going to put it in the bottom box. It just, it didn't look cool when I was making all that. So it's just sat there now in the unit, taking up space. So it's beautiful. Ben made the suggestion of chopping it down for propagations, but I'm not cutting that. I am not cutting that plant. You can't make me cut that plant. It's beautiful. It's, think about how many years it's taken to get that big. I'm not cutting that. I'd rather sell it than cut it. And that's just because I'd want somebody else to have something that big, but I don't even want to sell it. So I'm kind of faced with some issues there because I have plants in here that are big and they're not really doing anything, but I don't want to get rid of them. So I'm going to gloss over that one pretty quickly because it's honestly just the same situation as the large form monster. I just, I got it and I shouldn't have. It was some overlap from doing the living wall. It was supposed to be on the wall, so it wasn't budgeted to take up floor space. And floor space, it does take up. So that is another one that I... I, it's hard to say. I regret buying it, but I also kind of don't because I love it. Really difficult one, that one, but I'm putting it on the list. I'm going to commit to it. I regret buying it. And the last plant on my list is an absolute classic on my channel. It's the first plant to ever catfish me. And I know y'all know what that is if you've followed me for quite some time. And that is the Begonia Pavonina. Now then, I put this on a wish list video last year, the year before. When even was it? The year before? Yeah, the year before. It was this beautiful begonia. I'll have to find out what I said about it, but I think I just loved it because it was blue. I was like, hell yes. This beautiful, big kind of, I believe it looked a bit like an ear shape, like a wing shape. Gorgeous thing. This gorgeous, gorgeous blue. Blue is one of my favorite colors. Um, I think teal and blue are my favorite colors generally. Love that. And I thought it was gorgeous and I wanted it. I'd never had a begonia before. I think I had, I may have had amphioxus. I may not have at the time, but I really want this begonia. And eventually I got it. It took me ages, got it off eBay, it took a long time, but I got it. It sucked. Not really, it sucked. So it turns out that blue thing, by the way, is only something that happens under a certain light at a certain angle. It don't look like that. It actually just looks like a darky green, mossy green color. And that's how it stays. And I'm not saying that it's not a beautiful plant. Okay, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I mean, maybe I am actually, I don't know. <laughs> but for me, it, it it pissed me off because it's not what I bought. I wanted it because it was blue. I wanted a blue plant. Who doesn't want a blue plant? And I bought it and it just wasn't. And I remember talking about it when I was going to be planting the biob, I think. And I was like, yeah, here it is. This is it. It was just so underwhelming. And I think it may have died in the end, but admittedly, I probably neglected it a little bit. I shouldn't have, but honestly, I, it just pissed me off so much. I don't think I paid a lot for it. I cannot remember, honestly, how much I paid for it, but I'm so annoyed to be catfished by something because I'm like, oh, great. You know, I didn't have much space at the time and I was like, right now I have this begonia to look after. You know what I mean? So I regret that for that reason. And that's probably not a surprise being on that list because I know that everyone knew I was pretty disappointed by that, to be honest. But yeah, I think that's everything on my list. If there's anything that you think should have been on my list that I've obviously forgotten about, let me know. Because I, I don't know what I've regretted buying. I don't know. There will be more plants for the shop that I regret buying that I can't think of offhand. I've picked the really key ones out that I really remember. If there's anything that you think I've forgotten, let me know because I feel like there is something I've forgotten. I, I can't help but feel that sat here. So let me know in the comments below. Is there anything that you really regret buying? And that could either be because you got catfished, because it's now too big and you haven't got the room because I bet that happens a lot. Or maybe it's too small and you think, oh God, I wish I'd held out for a bigger one. I, I cannot be bothered to grow this. Or maybe it's something variegated that continues to just revert on you. Because actually that's something I haven't mentioned, um, which I should have actually. Just anything like that, please. Again, I would like to feel your pain and suffering. Give it to me. I want to read it all. Please leave that in the comments below. I would love to take a read of that. And that concludes this video. Thank you very much for watching. As I said before, if you want to know anything that's going on with my face, uh, then watch my second channel, I suppose. Uh, the link for that is down below. And let me know any videos you'd like to see in the meantime. It's a little bit hectic at the minute with videos. Um, these videos are out this week, but let me tell you ahead of time, it's Monday now I'm recording this. It will have been a struggle this week. I've had to travel to London twice this week to pick up plants because they're coming in on different days. Great. So I'll have had a very busy week and I can't, I don't have much time to plan things generally. So leave any requests you have for me down below. And until then, I will see you next week. Bye, guys.